Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is the association between psychopathy and intelligence? If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss anything new. Now, a lot of times when we think of the word psychopathy, there is this idea that psychopathic traits are related to intelligence, meaning the more we see of psychopathy, the higher level of intelligence we see. And this goes back in the media, in terms of movies, television, and even early research into psychopathy and intelligence. So one of the difficulties here is that we don't really have a single agreed upon definition of psychopathy, and we don't have a single agreed upon definition of intelligence either. So let's take a look at the concept of psychopathy. So psychopathy can be understood in a number of different ways, and there are several different instruments that measure psychopathy. And a lot of our understanding really comes from how those instruments break down the construct of psychopathy. One of the most popular instruments is the Psychopathy Checklist Revised. And another popular instrument is the Psychopathic Personality Inventory Revised. So if we look at the PCLR, the Psychopathy Checklist Revised, we see that there are different number of factors depending on which version of the instrument we look at. One popular conceptualization is a two-factor model, and each of those factors may have one or two lower order factors. So if we look at factor one, we see interpersonal and affective traits, like superficial charm, callousness, being egocentric. If we look at factor two, this is where we see antisocial behavior and sometimes lifestyle. So here we'd see irresponsibility, impulsivity, and violating society's norms, so largely thought of as criminality. Now, a lot of times, of course, when we think of psychopathy, we also think of antisocial personality disorder. And that's an official diagnosis in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. It's a cluster B personality disorder. The factor two that we see with psychopathy would be more closely related to antisocial personality disorder than the factor one. Sometimes factor one is even conceptualized as being helpful in some ways. So a lot of times we think of psychopathy overall as destructive and related to criminality, but it really depends on which traits someone has. Another instrument was the Psychopathic Personality Inventory Revised, and here we also see two factors, although there is a third factor which isn't used as much. The first two factors would be fearless dominance and self-centered impulsivity. Roughly speaking, fearless dominance lines up with factor one that I talked about before, except you also see characteristics like stress immunity, social boldness, and physical fearlessness, so not being afraid of being physically harmed. Now, self-centered impulsiveness is similar to that factor two. We saw antisocial behavior and lifestyle. We see recklessness, a tendency to exploit others, aggression, hostility, and impulsivity. Of course, impulsivity we also see with factor two. The third factor I mentioned that we don't really use too often, it's not necessarily strongly aligned with psychopathy is the cold-heartedness factor. And usually that's thought of as separate. And here we see lack of empathy, lack of remorse, lovelessness, and guiltlessness. So as you can see, psychopathy is a fairly complex construct. So understanding and measuring psychopathy is different. And of course, understanding and measuring intelligence is different. So I mentioned earlier that there is this relationship in the popular culture between psychopathy and intelligence. We see it in the movies and television. There's anecdotal evidence to support it. We know from the early research this idea was supported. We also know that with some of this research, of course, there were non-representative samples. So individuals were selected because they were particularly interesting to the researcher, and a lot of times those individuals, of course, would be more intelligent. So there was a bias in terms of who was measured, and of course there was a bias in terms of how they were measured. Now, in more recent research, we see mixed results here with psychopathy and intelligence. And one of the studies I'll be using to describe this is a study published in 2016 by Watts and colleagues, where they specifically looked at this question of psychopathy and intelligence, and they also looked at this idea of intelligence as a protective factor in psychopathy, specifically against committing violent crimes. So looking back at research that occurred before this for a moment, we do see mixed results, as I mentioned. Some studies show that there is a positive relationship between psychopathy and intelligence. Some studies show that there's no relationship. 
and other studies actually show that psychopathy is associated with less intelligence. Now one of the popular findings in a few studies has been that the interpersonal traits from factor one are associated with higher intelligence and the affective traits from factor one are associated with lower intelligence. Now looking at the results from this study, what they found here was that there is no relationship between psychopathy and intelligence. So very consistent with the mixed results that we've seen before. They did find some small levels of significance and effect size for certain types of intelligence and certain traits of psychopathy, but really not anything of note. Now with the protective factor question, which is this idea that intelligence is a protective factor for individuals with psychopathy, so it can prevent some of the antisocial behaviors. Here they found for the fearless dominance factor, I mentioned before, that intelligence may help. Intelligence may actually be a protective factor with fearless dominance. But with self-centered impulsivity, higher intelligence actually puts the individual at more risk for antisocial behavior. So we even have mixed results in terms of the protective factor finding. It's not really clear overall with psychopathy if intelligence is in fact a protective factor. So a lot of times in research there's this bias where there's this idea that we want to find statistically significant findings with large effect sizes. We want to establish relationships between constructs. But research that shows that there is no relationship between constructs is really just as important. So a study like this where no relationship is found still adds to our knowledge. It still improves our understanding of psychopathy and intelligence. I hope you found this description about the relationship between psychopathy and intelligence to be interesting. Thanks for watching.